Hi, everybody. We're going to start sharp in about three minutes. Dr. Gregor only has 30 minutes with us once we start, and we have lots of questions that um, our guests submitted. So I'm going to get through as many of them as possible. In fact, I'm going to pretty much skim over my normal intro and focus primarily on Dr. Gregor's, Dr. Gregor's bio and get to the questions. Um, and then after Dr. Gregor needs to leave, then I can um, go over up, up, our upcoming events. So the format's a little different this time just because I want to maximize our time with Dr. Gregor. We'll start in about two or three minutes. So welcome everybody. I'm so glad to see your faces. I see some familiar names here, some new names. We all feel pretty lucky to have Dr. Gregor here. I'll start Dr. Gregor in about three minutes. I'm seeing more and more people pop in. So hopefully they're on time. We have so many questions and I'm so excited about these questions people are asking because I myself have had them over the years. Oh my gosh. I'm going to ask you about Brazil nuts. That's the one that I get so confused about because every time I research Brazil nuts, it, I get conflicting information. All right, everybody, we're going to start in about two minutes. And for those that don't know me, I'm uh, Megan Burt. I'm director of community support groups with PBNSG, plant-based nutrition support group. And we're excited to have Dr. Gregor here. We'll start in about one minute. Please mute yourself for those that are coming in. I'm still admitting people, so I'm gonna have to... We got some excited people here, Dr. Gregor. I'm just going to read the questions in the order they came in. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, everybody, Dr. Gregor only has 30 minutes with us. He's a busy man. So I'm going to skip over my normal introduction. Um, at the end, once he needs to leave, then I'll kind of, I'll summarize what upcoming events we have and anything that you want to know about plant-based nutrition support group. But here we have Dr. Gregor with us today. And I'm going to be trying to admit people into the, um, into our Zoom as I re, uh, go over the bio. But everybody, we have Dr. Gregor here. I'm so excited. Um, a quick bio and then right to the questions. He's president of nutritionfacts.org as well as founding member and fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Michael Gregor, MD, is a physician, New York Times bestselling author, and an internationally recognized speaker on nutrition. He has videos on more than 2,000 health topics freely available at nutritionfacts.org with new videos and articles uploaded almost every single day. Uh, he is a graduate from Cornell University School of Agriculture and Tufts University School of Medicine. Three of his recent books, How Not to Die, The How Not to Die Cookbook, and How Not to Diet, all became instant New York Times bestsellers. His latest book, How to Survive a Pandemic, was released in May and is also available now. I'm admitting more and more people as they come in. All proceeds he receives from the sales, all of good books go to charity. So Dr. Gregor, we have a lot of questions. I'll get through as many as I possibly can. First question is, what daily supplements, if any, do you recommend for someone on a whole food plant-based diet? Vitamin B12, critically important for anyone eating healthy. We need a regular reliable source from somewhere that's either B12 fortified foods or supplements. Vitamin B12 is not made by plants, not made by animals either. Made by little microbes that blanket the earth. So we used to get B12 drinking out of a mountain stream or well water or something, but now we chlorinate the water supply to kill off any bacteria. So don't get a lot of B12 in our water anymore. Don't get a lot of cholera either. That's a good thing. They live in such a nice sanitary world. Our fellow great apes get all the B12 they need from eating bugs, dirt, and feces. I prefer supplements. 2,000 micrograms once a week of cyanocobalamin. Costs about five bucks a year. Get all the B12 you need. Easy squeezy. Perfect answer. Number two, next question. What is the least harmful oil to use when cooking? Uh, probably extra virgin olive. Okay. Uh, I have lost 55 pounds in the past year, but have now plateaued for two months. Haven't gained, just stuck. How can I get the scale moving again? 
I wrote a book for you. It's called How Not to Diet. Um, uh, it came out right before the pandemic started. Um, and uh, that's that I have, you know, my 21 tweaks, all the things that accelerate the loss of body fat, regardless of what you eat. So I encourage people to just go down the tweaks and lose as much or as little weight as they want. All right, there you go. All his books are phenomenal. All right, next question. What steps can a new vegan take to ensure the most success with this transition? Any resources, podcasts, videos, support groups, websites? There's this amazing organization called PBNSG. Woohoo! <laughs> um, uh, there's all sorts of wonderful resources. Nutritionfacts.org, uh, my book, How Not to Die, uh, which you can get at your local public library. Um, uh, what are some other good resources for people? Uh, PCRM.org, Physician Committee for Responsive Medicine has a lot of wonderful um, stuff out there. Um, uh, there is a plethora. I can't disagree with that. I recommend re registering for his website. He has the videos pop right into my email every, every few days. I watch them. I share them on Facebook and um, the podcast I listen to when I'm driving. So um, Dr. Greger has phenomenal resources on his website. Um, what does the data say about coconut products, milk, cream, not oil? Are these considered whole foods? And what do you recommend them in cooking or should they simply be avoided altogether? In what planet are they whole foods? Does coconut oil grow on a tree? No. So the only whole food source of coconut is either fresh coconut, um, whether young or old, or um, dried coconut flakes, unsweetened dried coconut flakes. You ready for the next question? Yep. Can you recommend any programs, preferably inpatient, that can help one fully transition to a plant-based diet? My mother suffers from chronic migraines, and although I have presented her with your info on plant-based diet, she lacks the motivation and discipline to attempt to change her health for the better. Oh, there are inpatient uh, places like, uh, you know, True North, but uh, they're inpatient for just uh, as long as you're inpatient. Then you go back home and she doesn't have the motivation to do it now. She's not going to have the motivation to do it in three weeks when she gets back home. So if people aren't going to do it, people aren't going to do it. You know, if someone wants to keep smoking, then they're going to keep smoking. Um, all we can do is give them our love and support and information. And then, uh, you know, it's their body, their choice. That's true. And that's why we have community support groups here at PBNSG. So maybe she can join our group and we can support it the best we can. All right. Next question. I just bought your book, How Not to Diet, along with the cookbook. Does this cookbook differ that much from the How Not to Die cookbook? Do I need them both? Oh, uh, you don't need either of them, but uh, they are both, uh, both uh, yeah, a whole new slew of recipes. Um, the difference, so uh, what, what's, they're similar in that they're both, not only are all the recipes healthy, including all the desserts, every single ingredient of every single recipe is healthy, is health promoting, a green light food, a whole plant food. So wait a second, how do you make something salty without salt or sweet without sugar? Those are some of the challenges we looked at. So I was excited to put out this no salt, no added salt, oil, sugar book. Um, uh, and then the, the difference is that the How Not to Diet tries to incorporate foods from the 21 tweaks. So for example, I encourage people to eat um, uh, a certain amount of vinegar, a certain amount of something called black cumin, which is a certain type of spice, all these things that people may, may not be familiar with. And so it's so like, wait a second, how am I gonna incorporate all this stuff into my diet? Okay, well, here's a whole bunch of recipes. This is how you can use black cumin, this is how you can use vinegar, this is how you can use um, kind of all these other kind of weird things that uh, were found to accelerate the loss of body fat. And so, but you know, if you're creative and you know, you could do it all on your own, there's gazillions of free recipes online. Um, but yeah, if you want to check out uh, the cookbooks at your local public library, I think you'll enjoy them. I got a lot of good feedback so far. All right. Thank you for that good answer. All right. Next one. Is it possible for a 30 ish female on a FODMAP diet to go whole food plant based for weight loss and stomach issues? Anyone can go plant based. It's like, uh, well, I don't know about me. Can I stop smoking? Yes, everyone can stop smoking. Everyone can eat healthier. And it's never too late. Um, even the, uh, so I actually have some, um, I have a webinar coming up on SIBO and on leaky gut and talk about these kind of issues. Um, even the inventors, the people who came up with the FODMAP diet, um, 
say no one should stick to the FODMAP diet. It's used therapeutically in certain clinical situations for a time for a short time and the reason is because they realize how bad it is for your gut bugs these FODMAPs are prebiotics that's where your good gut bugs eat now if you have dysbiosis if you have bad bugs then uh, there's a certain uh, you know uh, logic to trying to starve the bad bugs um, and so in certain circumstances um, um, uh, the, the restriction of FODMAPs can be useful but should not be done long term this is a short-term solution um, and uh, so we all have to get back to a good, healthy diet, um, and that's a diet centered around whole plant foods. Okay, thank you. Okay, my child is organic, plant-based whole foods, and we don't consume sugary plant milk without, with added sugars, and do not drink juices, yet she has significant tooth decay, according to the Ooh. dentist. Yikes. What do you recommend and any ideas on the cause? Um, so a tooth decay, uh, so sugar is a necessary cause of tooth decay. Without sugar, there's no tooth decay. Um, and so uh, now, so there's two different, what you can have is enamel erosion. Um, uh, I don't know if you suck on citrus all day or something, but if you're actually having tooth decay, if you're actually getting cavities, then you are eating sugar by definition. No tooth decay without sugar. We've got tons of research to show there's only one necessary cause. Um, and so this kid is, is getting candy from someplace. Um, yeah, teeth should not decay. Those bacteria um, grow on um, sugar. So uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you other than, uh, you know, look under the mattress. <laughs> okay. Um, can the spices you recommended, garlic, black cumin, ginger powder, be combined in a bowl of soup or a smoothie? When vegetables and or fruits are made into a smoothie, do they lose the benefit of their swell, cell walls? Nope. Go for it. Do it. I mean, it sounds disgusting, but uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, next question. What are your thoughts on tofu? Would you consider it too processed for an optimal diet? Well, optimal diet uh, would be something with a whole, completely whole soy food, like edamame or whole soybeans in a can or something. So yeah, it's processed. It loses about half the fiber, half the minerals. But look, soybeans are so healthy that you remove half nutrition, still have really healthy food. So tofu is healthy, um, but is tempeh healthier? Yeah, because it's a, you can see the individual whole soybeans in there. It's a less processed food. Okay. Um, next question. I am 66 years old, 5'9", 160 pounds, and have all good blood readings. The one area of risk is my blood pressure. I would love to get it to 120 over 80, but usually run about 130 to 145 over 80 to 93. I'm primarily on a whole food plant-based diet, exercise daily, take super beets daily to try to increase nitric acid oxide. And I'm thinking about seeing Dr. Esselstein. Do you have any recommendations? Cut out salt. Salt. Yeah, I mean, so you don't want 120 over 80, you want 110 over 70. That's the ideal blood pressure. And you're not going to do that. Uh, most people can't do it without uh, cutting out salt. We want under 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day. It's almost impossible to do if you eat processed foods. Um, so, uh, so she can't just be mostly whole food plant-based. She should be strictly whole food plant-based um, with no added sodium and see what her blood pressure does. Okay. Uh, next question. I have been eating a whole food plant-based for over six months and I've only seen a two pound weight loss. My last blood work showed my thyroid was low first time in 60 years. GP says it will resolve itself. My mother and daughter are both being treated for thyroid issues. issues. Thoughts? So certainly hypothyroidism can slow one's metabolism and result in weight gain. Um, and so the question is, well, what's wrong with the thyroid? Um, and so there are reversible causes like iodine deficiency, uh, those getting uh, um, uh, the the thyroid hormones are actually made out of iodine, and so if you don't have enough iodine, you can't make uh, the even if you have a thyroid gland is totally fine. There's just not enough substrate to make those the hormones. Where you get iodine from? The healthiest place is actually sea vegetables. So you know uh, you know sheets of nori that you can just snack on, or there's all sorts of ways you can get um, seaweed into their diets. Filled packed with trace minerals, not just uh, iodine. Uh, but you can get tested for that. You can do, you can test urinary uh, um, iodine levels. Uh, that would be a great if that was the cause. 
rather than some kind of autoimmune condition. The fact that it runs in her family suggests it may be something like a Hashimoto's thyroiditis where your body attacks your own thyroid gland and can scar it up. So it's uh, yeah, critically important that uh, figure out what the cause. So then as always, you should treat the cause. What are your thoughts on those iodine drops? You can put like a drop of iodine in your food each day. Is that okay? Uh, well, you should, the, 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 not if you, you, you can actually get too much iodine too and cause something called high, high, tox, uh, um, thyroid toxicosis, which is a uh, hyperthyroid. Um, and so uh, we want the Goldilocks the right amount. And so I have videos on exactly how to do that. Okay. Uh, next question. Do collagen and biotin play any roles in hair and nail health? Is it worth investing in these supplements? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Um, uh, because I'm actually doing as a, you know, working on a new book, how not to age talking about longevity research. I have a chapter on, uh, hair and nail health. Um, and I have a whole section on biotin, whole section on collagen, and they're packed with articles. I haven't read them in it all yet. Uh, and if I haven't read any of them yet, so, but, uh, they'll definitely be in the new book. So stay tuned. Okay, good. Um, Next question. My total cholesterol hasn't changed a lot since going plant-based four years ago. What has changed is my HDL and LDL. My L HDL is 109. My LDL is 62. Triglycerides. Wow. 34. Do I need to worry about such a high HDL? If so, are there any other tests I should ask to rule anything? Nope. Perfect. Wonderful. You're gorgeous. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I was looking at those numbers thinking those are pretty good numbers. Uh, it's the, they're gorgeous numbers. You should you should tattoo them to your forehead and make everyone feel bad. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, next question. I am wondering about your opinion on air fried foods. I like to make air fried potatoes, no oil for lunch, pretty much every single day, along with a gigantic salad. I love it, but just wondering your opinion on it. Uh, air fried sweet potatoes instead. Okay. But I guess the question probably is, does air frying deplete the nutritional benefits? No, uh, no. The, the concern would be about the formation of AGEs, advanced glycation end products, which is when high protein, high fat foods are exposed to high temperatures. Uh, potatoes are not a problem because they are not a uh, high fat food. But um, uh, if you put some uh, tofu, that's a high fat, high soy, uh, excuse me, high fat, high protein food. You put, you blacken some tofu in your, uh, in your air fryer and that'd be, not be a good thing. Or an avocado, right? Uh, well, avocado's high fat, not high protein. Oh, you're right. So okay. it has to be the combination of the two. So basically it's just nuts, some nuts, seeds, and soy. Okay. Uh, we do not want to expose to high dry heat. Okay. All right, next question. I'm a nurse in the ICU and take care of very, um, of very people who suffer as a result of eating a sad diet, standard American diet. If I only have five to 10 minutes to talk about, di about diet, what can I say to get the most bang for my buck and what make the most impact on inspiring them for change? All you can do in that amount of time is really share resources, right? And so you can be like, there's this amazing research called nutrition resource, nutritionfacts.org, or there's a book, How Not to Die. There's, you know, um, uh, you know, that's all we can do because, you know, obviously they need to, um, uh, you know, there's only so much you can say. Um, uh, yeah, if there were just three things uh, you could add to one's diet to improve one's health, it would probably be berries, the healthiest fruits, greens, the healthiest vegetables, and legumes, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils. If there were just three things to remove one from one's diet, um, number one would be trans fats, which is pretty much being removed anyway by law. Um, uh, processed meat, bacon, ham, hot dogs, lunch meat, sausage, just the worst. Um, and then uh, soda, liquid candy. So, the, the, you know, cut out those things, add those things, you'll be well on your way. But if you really want to know, um, then yeah, you got to dive a little deeper. Right. And for those, a lot of people don't like to take time, time to read or they don't have time to read a big book or articles. Oh, well, you know what? Oh, I got a great resource. Sorry to, to interrupt. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Kickstart program, the PCRM's 21 day Kickstart. Go to 21daykickstart.org. Um, uh, it's a free program. Hundreds of thousands of people have done it. It's a bunch of different languages. Starts at the first of every month. Um, you join us kind of part of a social media group and then you share daily tips and recipes and you give support to each other. And a 21 day program to, to start eating healthy. Um, that's something you can tell in two seconds to somebody, get them signed up and get them involved. That's a great, that's a great resource. 
Okay. And then what I was asking is some people don't have time to read books or they don't like to read books or articles. And if uh, someone's to recommend a documentary, do you recommend what the health or the game changers or those? Uh, uh, yeah, probably the best uh, documentary out there is Game Changers. Okay. All right, question about pans. This came from our community support group, uh, PBNSG. What are the best frying pans to use for no Oh, water? I think I said hands. Pans, P. P. Got it. Uh, what are the best frying pans for no oil cooking? Are the nonstick or ceramic pans safe, even though they only last about a year? Uh, no, uh, I'd, uh, I'd stick with uh, uh, stainless steel. Okay. Um, calcium supplements aren't advised, so should we avoid soy milk that is fortified with calcium? No, because it's not at the same level. So if you look at uh, it's the spike in um, calcium levels in your blood when you take this massive whopping, you know, 500 milligram calcium dose. Um, but, uh, you know, a cup of soy milk has what, 180, something like that. Um, and so that's the way you're supposed to get your calcium, in little bits throughout the day in a variety of different foods. Um, not a big spike at once, which makes your blood hypercoagulable, makes your, thickens your blood and increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. Okay, okay and um, another supplement question. For those that need to supplement vitamin D, um, there's conflicting information online about whether you need to buy a vitamin D that also has vitamin K. Nope, 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 nope. Just vitamin D. Don't worry about vitamin K. Vitamin K, dark green leafy vegetables. So eat your greens, you're fine with K. Okay. Um, is decaffeinated green tea as good a beverage as regular green tea? Any green tea is better than no green tea. Um, now, some of the some of the nutri the phytonutrients that make green tea so wonderful are uh, removed in the decaffeination process. So probably regular green tea is better than decaf. But if you're not going to drink tea unless it's decaf, definitely drink decaf. Yeah. And you don't want to drink any caffeinated drink um, for like six hours before you go to bed. Another supplement question, omelet powder. Do you recommend a teaspoon of omelet powder a day? I'd have chlorella every single day. But a teaspoon a day, woo, that's a lot. How, um, much, how much do you recommend? Um, we don't know. I mean, we just, uh, there, there, there haven't been enough studies to, I mean, so different studies use different amounts. Um, but, uh, so I take a quarter teaspoon a day. Okay, so a day, but just a quarter teaspoon, okay. I mean, but that, that's based on, yeah, that, I mean, that, uh, one could argue for a, a variety of different amounts. Um, yeah, that's just uh, what I do. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, we just not enough studies to clarify uh, okay. the uh, ideal dose. And for those that don't know what alma powder are, do you, do you mind summarizing what alma powder yes, is? It's, uh, it's just a dried berry, dried Indian gooseberries. Um, and uh, it's just, uh, has a, a number of benefits. Uh, and uh, so it's one of the things I've incorporated, it's like turmeric. I've incorporated it in my life, not because I like turmeric, but because it's got benefits. Okay, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Uh, I do a quarter teaspoon of black cumin, uh, ground black cumin seeds today, a quarter teaspoon of amla, of this dried Indian gooseberry powder a day. Um, and why, if you look at my video, if you type any of those nutritionfacts.org, you'll see all the videos. Okay. talking about all the benefits um and so that's why i do it okay all right christian about nutritional yeast if you don't have crohn's or other health concerns is there an upper daily limit for consuming nutritional yeast oh and it's not uh other health there's only two health conditions crohn's disease and um uh hydronitis separativa um those are the only two health conditions where you want to stay away from nutritional yeast all everything else everyone else can eat as much as they want and there's a second question to this one. As long as nutritional yeast is not fortified with folic acid, but uses folate, are fortified brands appropriate or should we use unfortified brands? Uh, no, nothing's fortified with folate because folate is not uh, stable, shelf stable. So even if it says folate, it's actually folic acid, which your body turns into folate, but uh, not as quickly as rats do it. And that's why they added folic acid to the food supply because we thought that human beings could make folate out of it and we wouldn't have high circulating levels of folic acid in our body. Um, it's still uh, uh, controversial as to the um, whether or not that's a good thing. Probably increase our risk of bladder cancer and a few other things. But uh, 
um, but uh, but dramatically decreases the risk of uh, certain type of birth defects. So critically important that uh, women of reproductive age eat lots of beans and greens, which is the best way to get a folate in its natural form. Lentils. Oh yeah, lentils packed with folate. Right. Okay, this is actually my question I submitted. Brazil nuts, one a week, one a month? No, uh, no, it's the, it's the name of the video. What's the name of the video? The name of the video is four Brazil nuts once a month. That's like the name of the video. I don't know why people are so confused. Four Brazil nuts, so like on the first of the month, have four Brazil nuts and you're done for the month? Done. Okay. In Everyone. fact, that would be too much. You'd get selenium toxicity ate four a day. That's how great. many? How many do you have? You have four, four on the first of the month. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what day of the month. Just as long as, <laughs> as long as it's not every day. Once a month. I like schedules. Okay, okay. So that's for selenium. For those that are wondering about Brazil nuts. No, that's not for selenium. That's for cholesterol reduction. Okay. Well, they do have selenium, correct? They do have selenium, but that's why you can't do that every day because you actually get selenium yeah. toxicity. It's too much selenium. Okay. So now we all know four a day. I mean, four. Oh, God. Four, four once a month. And if you like schedules. And this is only for, and this is only if you have cholesterol problems. I mean, the whole point is lower your cholesterol. If cholesterol is fine, you don't have to eat any Brazil nuts. Okay. All right. Um, how, here's a question. How bad is it to drink diet soda? I'm struggling with it. It's bad. I know I made a face when I read it. Drink water, drink bad. green tea, drink hibiscus tea, yeah. drink uh, sparkling water, drink, drink, you know, like LaCroix or one of these things that, you know, it's the artificial sweeteners we don't want. Okay. All right, this is a long question and we have six, six minutes. So I'm gonna read through it slowly so you can hear it all. I lost my sense of smell and taste for flavor after having COVID in early March fruits and vegetables were not appealing because i couldn't taste and like what i once loved i gained weight because eating the unappealing food caused me to feel depressed and angry so i was drawn to processed vegan foods where i could at least taste sweet and salty but no flavor i regained my sense of smell and taste after five months and lost much of the weight i gained and i once again love whole food plant-based foods but now i find my sense of smell and taste of flavor is gone again i'm one of the tens of thousands of people with long covid with a lot, lot of ongoing and intermittently funky symptoms. Do you have any suggestions for eating whole food plant-based since I can't smell or taste again and fruits and veggies are unappealing and distasteful? Yeah, we have no idea um, what's gonna help with these uh, longstanding COVID symptoms just because it's never happened before in history. And so we'll eventually figure it out, but now we're all in the dark. Um, uh, but certainly eating healthy uh, is uh, would be, uh, it can't hurt and can only help all the other horrible things that's going on. Um, and so uh, I, uh, I mean, so in terms of, well, wait a second, if things don't taste really well, well, this is, this is your opportunity to eat really nasty tasting, super healthy stuff. If you hate broccoli, ah, now you can't taste it. Eat lots of broccoli. Oh my God. Right. I mean, people eat crappy diets because they, you know, cause people eat donuts cause they taste so good. If you can't taste the donut. All right. Might as well eat some broccoli. Right. <laughs> Or omelet. Omelet doesn't taste good. Oh my God, it's horrible. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you advise the use of honey? How, what about prunes versus dates as a sweetener? Um, well, I, we, uh, there's, uh, we, we actually want some nutrients with our sweetness. How are we going to do that? Fruit, dried fruit. Um, uh, perfectly good. So yeah, dates. I had a smoothie today. I had a sweet potato smoothie. Of course, the sweet potato added some sweetness, but I also added three dates. Um, and that helped because I had a whole bunch of cranberries too. It was kind of like a pumpkin pie smoothie. Um, and so, yeah, how do I make it sweet? You make it sweet with uh, fruit. All right. I'm watching the clock, so I know you need to leave at in three minutes sharp. In three minutes. I know. I'm watching it. Um, what would you recommend for people with no gallbladder to maximize nutrient absorption and minimize excess of bile? Um, uh, high fiber. Fiber, fiber, fiber. High fiber food. So that's uh, the drier plant foods like whole grains and legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, lentils. Okay. If I haven't lost any weight since converting to whole food plant-based, 75% label free about a year ago, what should be the initial things to be checking for? Oh, um, uh, you can check for thyroid function. There's a whole bunch of things. Uh, it's all talk about in my book, How Not to Diet. Okay. We got three minutes. What are your views on nuts and seeds? Eat them. 
Okay, good. I eat them, so I'm glad. That's why I said good. Um, Not today. Um, does an individual still need to take an omega-3 if they're getting a tablespoon of flaxseed or chia seed every day? Uh, I think uh, they should consider uh, taking a, uh, you know, 250 milligrams of uh, a long chain, preformed long chain, uh, pollutant-free source, uh, like, you know, algae-based DHA every day. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I lay out uh, my uh, uh, why I think that in a series of videos that you can watch and make up your own mind. I'm, I'm convinced, uh, but uh, other people might not be by the same data. Uh, which is fine, but probably a good idea till we know more. Okay. And I think we have time for one more for you. Is there a link between gluten sensitivity and thyroid nodules? Is there a link between elevated BMI and the growth of thyroid nodules? Um, uh, oh yeah, this actually came up. I just did a thyroid webinar. Someone asked about um, whether there's any link between uh, gluten and, uh, and uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, this autoimmune thyroid disorder. Um, and so I actually looked it up on the webinar live and uh, it turns out that uh, there does not appear to be any benefit of uh, going gluten free in terms of helping um, uh, uh, change, uh, improve thyroid uh, function in terms of thyroid hormone levels. Um, uh, and what was the other uh, BMI? Actually, it's not the BMI causing thyroid nodules, it's thyroid dysfunction causing uh, uh, weight gain or weight loss for that matter. Okay. Do you have time for one more? That's right. A quick one. Okay. What is your opinion on gluten? Do you eat gluten or do you avoid gluten? I am not the one in 141 Americans that has, uh, uh the celiac disease for that one, that rare less than one percenter. Uh, they need to absolutely avoid all gluten for the rest of their lives. But, uh, thankfully I am in the 99%. Um, and, uh, and so eat, uh, I, in fact, I had rye berries this very day. Um, uh, and, uh, that's one of the gluten containing grains. Okay. So the gluten-free diet's a fad, unless you actually are celiac. All right. Yeah. Because you're cutting out really healthy foods like uh, wheat, barley, and rye. Right. Okay. Well, everybody, he had 30 minutes to, to spare to share with us. That's 30 minutes. I got through as many questions as I possibly could. If you have any you other did a questions. Great job. Thank you for joining us and everybody else. I will, I'll talk about a few things as soon as we, we can let Dr. Gregor go because he's a busy man. Thank you so much for being Keep here. Keep up the us. great work, everybody. I really appreciate it. And it was, it's an honor to meet you. So I'm sorry if I read those questions so fast. My heart was beating because I had so many questions to get through and he said he had 30 minutes and that's it. So I was watching the clock and admitting people in. So I'm sorry if some of those questions were read too fast, but remember uh, you will receive the recording of this. So if there's any, questions that you heard that you want to hear his answer again, go back to the recording. And if you have come up with any questions later, or maybe your question didn't get answered, because I didn't even get to look in the chat for questions because I had so many questions in front of me, please email me, Megan at pbnsg.org, and I will email Dr. Gregor to find the answer. Um, as some of you noticed, we didn't do our normal introduction to what PBNSG is because Gregor had to start right on time and he only had 30 minutes. Um, so I just want to go over a few of the upcoming events we have and some exciting news from PBNSG. For those that are new, PBNSG stands for Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. And our job is to advocate and educate on plant-based lifestyle and how it can change your life. Um, I want to remind everyone that you can visit pbnsg.org to subscribe to our newsletters, register for events, find community support event, our, our monthly community support event, which is the second Thursday of each month. There's time for Q&A. We always have a presenter. And as you know, we have our virtual events like tonight's with Dr. Greger. Um, upcoming events are uh, Tuesday, March 30th. We have our donation-based culinary event with Eat, Plant, Love founders and chefs, Doug and Sherry Schmidt. That'll be really, really great. I'm excited about it. And then Thursday, April 8th, we have our community support group meeting with Siva Foods founder and chef Michelle May. And she also does dog food, um, a dog food company. So if you have questions about your, the health of your dog, she can talk about that as well. Um, Tuesday, April 13th, we have plant-based chef, baker and author Debbie Adler. And then Tuesday, April 20th, we have the vegan MD, Dr. Miranda Graham. Um, a lot of you know, and some of you don't know, we're 
PDNSG is enrolling some exciting new things. We're, got, we're um, in the next, hopefully pretty soon, we're gonna have our specialized groups where there'll be different groups dedicated to certain topics like a cancer group, a heart disease group, a PCOS group. Um, there's about 10 groups we're trying to un unroll in the next 30 to 60 days. So stay tuned for information on that. Subscribe to our website because we'll keep subscribers updated. We're also enrolling our PBNSGU, that stands for university, where we'll have educational modules available. So there's so much to come. And if you go to our shop page, we have our phenomenal cookbook um, where there's everything is plant-based whole foods recipes. I have yet to try one that's not phenomenal. And then of course, Dr. Gregor has uh, his cookbook that he was talking about when he first started talking. So um, it's a short event tonight. As, as we know, the whole point was to, to ask Dr. Gregor some questions and hopefully you got some answers. Um, and so thank you for being here. And again, if you think of a question later on, let me know. I will email Dr. Gregor um, and I'll find the answer for you. Okay, thank you for coming. And um, it was a good night. I'm so excited that we had Dr. Gregor here. <laughs>